and welcome to Adventures in DeFi Kingdoms. This is your host, Raf, here tonight, streaming to you live, high by the keep, in the hot air balloon. And tonight, I have Nindorf with me. How you doing, Nindorf? Pretty good. Hello, listeners. All right. Well, it's been a while since we spoke last, and we're in a bit of a jewel apocalypse at the moment. Uh, how you doing hanging on uh, with the price of Jewel kind of bouncing all over the place? Yeah, doing pretty good. You know, it, it can get stressful, but at the same point, you know, you, we got to remember like the massive gains we've made. I was double checking real quick uh, before this. Um, in today's what, the January 20th, and uh, we're back to the price levels of, it looked like roughly mid December. So, you know, it, it's not really that unusual for crypto, I'd say. And I don't know if you checked, but even this afternoon, even the stock market was taking a pretty big tumble towards after hours. So uh, I'm, I'm not going to sweat it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this is the small stuff. Yeah, I'm definitely hanging in on this for the long term. I think I was feeling a, a little nervous <laughs> yesterday, but as I uh, you know, had a good night's sleep, kind of calm my nerves and like you said I, I think this is something that it's probably healthy for the game um, to have this kind of uh, reversion back to the mean um, and and you know I, I still think that there's going to be a lot of great things to come we still have uh, Crystal Veil vale about ready to launch uh, sometime in Q1 of this year and a lot of the snapshots that they're doing for Crystal Veil vale and tomorrow and I expect that you know in the next month or so we'll probably see that jewel price shoot right back up. So I'm actually going to try to continue to sit on, sit on more and more jewel. And as I, as I get ready for that. So, uh, why don't you take us to the question of the day now? Yeah, sure. So, um, we, you know, we've had a, we might even had two Wednesdays since we last met. I forget when the last date was, but something that I always check every Wednesday when they release their new patch to beta is I go over and check out stylus, the stylus Sandra. When, when do you think we're going to be able to get a new cut or a new do for our heroes? I don't know. And stylus Sandra is also the ghost, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's like grayed out. Like, what's the deal with that? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I hope it's soon. Now, will she do new cuts for your heroes or will she allow you to change your avatar? Ooh. I guess, you know, that's actually fascinating. I, I was just under the assumption that it was the hero cards, but now that you mention it, actually, I think that stuff's kind of genetic, so maybe they don't want you touching that. Maybe it is your avatar. <laughs> oh, man, you just blew my mind a little bit there. All right, but I'm, I'm looking forward to that. It, it's kind of funny how, you know, there's these different things that you'll you'll see in the maps, and it's, it's really crazy to imagine where this game has come from uh, before. If those of you who... Uh, are a little newer to the the DeFi Kingdom space, go check out some of their older maps. I mean, this game is so much more beautiful than where they were at before. Oh, All yeah, right. no doubt. Well, um, let's go ahead and, and talk a little bit about um, the Dev Dive segment that we're going to jump yeah. into. So why don't you go ahead and, and take us away? Like you mentioned earlier, we're here uh, Thursday, January 20th, and uh, yesterday, API version 6 dropped in beta, and the game is a heck of a lot better. <laughs> but imagine that. So tell us about that. Yeah, so as we've been waiting for, you know, like you said, they finally released it. Um, Personally, what I've been noticing is anything that loads your heroes, either from the tavern or from your heroes under the My Heroes button, is very much more responsive. Like, that seems to be loading significantly faster. Um, I did notice, I don't know if you've been having this issue, but on the beta site after that release, if I complete quests and then I want to go, say, relist a hero, uh, it still shows my hero is questing. And I've actually had to go back to the game, not the non-beta version of the site, to relist heroes. Have you seen anything like that? Yeah, I, I have. And my workaround was uh, waiting <laughs> time as my ally and uh, clicking on the resolve stuck quest function. Uh, oh, sure. And then loading and reloading. 
Um, and so oh, I, I don't know if any of those things were actually effective as much as time and just it switching over to a new block. Um, but that's that's what I've been doing. Yeah, I've been experiencing the same thing. But outside of that, you know, <laughs> relatively small inconvenience. Uh, boy, it's been it's been so much more fun. Uh, just playing the game and navigating questing is so much faster you know I, I'm up to 20 well now I'm back down to 20 heroes I sold a couple today but you know being up to 22 heroes I was really struggling to you know just get things done and not have it take an hour of your life Oh yeah, yeah, I hear you, and I've noticed too. You know, I, I consistently list heroes overnight, or you know, during the working hours of the day, if I wanted to sell, and you know, there was zero movement, and it's kind of funny. Already today, yeah, I also had sold two or three, I forget, but yeah, funny. Turns out I bought two more, so whoops, whatever. <laughs> No, I know. It's uh, as soon as I get a little bit of jewel in my pocket, it feels like it burns a hole in there. Uh, I sold a few yesterday, and then right right away yesterday after I sold them, I uh, summoned a few more, and you know, trying to uh, you know, still feeling a little incentivized to keep that uh, summon count climbing with the the option or the. Uh, you know, I should say the, the carrot dangling above me. That's the uh, the shiny crystal veil Gen Zero uh, for so many yeah. heroes. So I don't know. What, I try did to you keep get anything good? Going. What's that? Did you get anything good? I mean, if you've been doing some summon, don't leave us hanging. I'm oh, curious. Oh yeah, yeah. Let me uh, let me share. I'll I'll go ahead and uh, bring up what I got. So uh, and I could talk a little bit about some of my strategy here if you're all right with. Uh, yeah, away from Dev Dive for a second. Take a segue. So I went ahead and uh, bought, and this was now about two and a half weeks ago. I purchased a common uh, eight out of eight or seven out of seven uh, archer miner and a thief miner, both of them common. Okay. And my goal when I was doing that was. Uh, trying to see if I could get a, a really, uh, yeah, eight out of eight. Uh, this, this guy was the first, um, of, of, uh, the, the two pair that I bought and, uh, he's a miner and he has that purple strength. Too. Oh, nice. And so I went ahead and bought him and a thief and I was going for that, that pair where you're getting the archer thief, you get a dark knight. And I decided, you know what I need? Uh, I, I don't care if it's uh, common guys because common guys can be decent jewel bringers uh, on the mining quest. And so I've been sending them out and summoning. And out of the four summons that I've done, I got one that was a, a pirate, um, a legendary pirate pirate. And oh, so nice. the, um, it went ahead and played in my favor here. Legendary pirate pirate five out of five and then uh because i've been selling some of the um, archers that i've been getting uh that i've been spawning i've been continuing to resummon and then last night i got a mutation and believe it or oh, not nice. check this out warrior thief uh strength double strength nice lighting. and so i i couldn't be more thrilled with that uh kind of turn of luck he's an uncommon uh, but still, that's uh, that's pretty exciting for me. So that's been that's my, cool. my strategy right now. And I, you know, I was listening to I can't remember what podcast it was on YouTube, and uh, I'll, I'll see if it comes to me later. But one of the one of the hosts there mentioned that he was getting about one jackpot a day went on his mining quests, and you know he had three to four miners going out every single time. And I was like, oh, okay, I can see that. That makes sense. Um, and so I'm, I'm sending out, you know, about five groups of, of miners a day, uh, about three at a time uh, with, the, with the summons that I've been doing. And with that, I'm finding I, I am getting about one jackpot a day. And that is pulling from my lock jewel balance. Uh, but that's, that's still a, an amazing... Um, influx of, of jewel and so something that I kind of highly recommend especially as we're going through a bit of a price dip here um, you know maybe you can 
put some dollars in, get another hero. I know um, I've been offering to potentially uh, summon my two guys together, my archer and my thief, um, and you're welcome to some of that offspring that costs Nindorf. Uh, Ooh, or sure. I know you're trying to, to, to tr do a little wheel and a deal and, and, and trade <laughs> some of your guys too. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and, and you know, it's kind of funny because I'd realized that, you know, I only had three miners and yeah, I guess I didn't really think about the jackpot odds. I'd only gotten at two ever. So I, I just kind of considered them like a rare item. And then we chatted earlier and, and you'd mentioned how you can actually get a decent amount of jackpots if you have enough heroes. So so that was what I had man managed to sell a uh, five of five common ninja today. So I used that to buy a couple miners. I think I had a, a couple uncommons. Um, and the, the funny thing about it was it was a I, I did this sort of on purpose, you know, I don't know if it was intentional or what, but one of them was a monk miner and another was a pirate miner. The prices just happened to be that those are the ones I got. Um, and I was like, you know, I'm going to do, I'm going to follow your strategy. I'm going to see if I can't make another one. The hero bot told me I had about an 80% chance at getting another miner. I, I roll the dice and I get a ninja forager. I'm like, oh, I, I, the ninja <laughs> oh, I just no. got rid of, here he is. I was like, <laughs> dang it. <laughs> Coming back so like, to bite you, that's for sure. Yeah, but you know what? Ninja's not bad either, so. No, no. I I, I have a, a ninja miner uh, as well, and he, his strength isn't that high. Um, ninja forager's all right, too. Uh, but yeah, that's that's uh, definitely a, a, a kick, in the, kick in the butt, uh, especially since you're, <laughs> you're going for that miner profession. All right, well, how about um, we go to uh, the next dev dive topic? For us. Yeah, sure. So um, I'd kind of teased this out on our little Discord channel here, um, and I had released this feature earlier this morning, and uh, I, I was just curious how long it would take people to see. It was uh, It's basically a, a new way that you can compare heroes. Um, it, it's not near as advanced as what I would say the hero bot is and what we talked about with Mr. Zipper you know, in the past. But what this basically is, is this is basically... I've heard a lot of people asking about, you know, how do I see if our heroes have these advanced genes? And so the first version of the hero site would let you see that. So the second edition will let you compare two heroes and it'll give you where are there possible mutations with those two heroes. So it's, it's like I said, it's, it's a little different than the hero bot. The hero bot is more going to tell you your probability and your odds of what your, your child will get. Um, and this is more of a just highlighting where mutations are possible, not just in class and all that, um, but also in these advanced abilities we've been talking about, you know, that active one, active two, passive one, passive two. So I thought that was pretty cool. Nice, yeah. And I've been using it as I'm contemplating, and we'll get into this a little bit later with the Gen Zero summoning section, uh, but I've been using it as I'm contemplating, you know, who could I potentially hire uh, to, to pair with some of our Gen Zeros, and, and what am I going to do? I, you know, kind of actually uh, wanted to uh, talk about it as uh, I'm about ready to enter into uh, the ability. Uh, I think their timers are about ready to expire here. Um, and so I, ha I have the option ahead of me of, of do I do I try to hire them out, which is something I'm considering right now, or do I try to pair them up? And I've been using your tool to try to figure out, you know, can I pair up the heroes? And uh, what what could those uh, possible stats uh, mutating start to look at? I, I think that's something that, you know, we're, we're probably ahead of. And so, you know, our, our listeners out there who are interested in, you know, trying to, to, to play the game for, for future opportunity. Again, not investment advice, uh, but I, I would say, you know, I, I think that the next big thing could be, you know, can you get those mutations, as Mr. Zipper talked about in the last round, um, could you get those mutations of those combat skills and, uh, you know, you know, end up selling those heroes with those advanced elite or transcendent uh, mutations uh, down the road. And it, it appears right now that there really are not that many heroes out there. 
uh, that have these skills and so I suspect that once those skills become visible that those are going to become a premium and so uh, listeners out there that is actually a, a free offering uh, that we have so uh, we're going to go ahead and link that in, in the YouTube and in the anchor descriptions um, and so please uh, check out that site that, that Nindorf built um, and we want you to have access to that and, and you know, try to go mutate some skills and, and hopefully you can prepare yourself for uh, some happy selling in the future. Yeah, that's right. And I think I'd like to be in talks with Mr. Zipper in the future a little bit too. Maybe we can bring in some of his code to the site or some of our the logic for the mutations into the hero bot. I think you know, marrying those two concepts would make an even more one-stop shop for this sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then I think the last note I had about uh, the site... Um, is that, you know, I'm always reaching out and seeing if people have ideas, shoot us ideas if you have them on Discord. Um, otherwise, the thing that I'm thinking about adding is I, I see people ask a lot too about how do I see the, the either the parents of my hero? Well, that one's kind of easy. You know, the tavern and your heroes will do that. But what about the children? Like, who has this hero already summoned? So, and people find that interesting as well. And I think... That's a simple query, really, if you know how to use the API. And I've already got all the rendering tools for the site. Uh, so that might be something I'll look at adding here in the near future as, a, as kind of another little helpful feature. Nice, nice. Thank you for that. I, you know, I'm sure our listeners will, will be quite thankful as well. So um, anything else that you want to talk about for the, the Dev Dive Corner? I think that wraps it up for today. All right, very good. Well, let's go jump into some AMA notes as I'm I'm trying to trying to uh, work through some some beta challenges here. Just as we got done singing the praises of beta, I'm trying to cancel some sales and send some guys out on quests, but I'll have to do that later. Um, all right, so <laughs> with the, with the AMA notes, uh, yeah, no kidding. Um, you know, and it's it, it's kind of interesting. Um, you know, in, in retrospect, thinking back on the week, as I, as I mentioned during the intro, feeling a lot better after a good night's sleep about the game. And, you know, we, we had a lot of uncertainty in the crypto markets today and, and yesterday and a lot of dropping in jewel price this week. Um, and, you know, this was one of my actually favorite AMAs that, that we've had. Um, you know, there was just so many amazing nuggets dropped. And as you know, I always like to, to, to reference this from Sandwich Punch. It's the, the sacred text of Hubert. Um, he was there on the AMA. And the things that, that stuck out to me the most, um, the first one was time turn-based combat system. And I'm actually really excited about this. This is near and dear to, to my, my days of playing RPGs, like Final Fantasy VII. And so the way that I understand it is that there is going to be a, a timer turn-based combat. And so what does timer mean? Timer likely means that you're able to choose basic actions or your hero will continue to make hack actions on a set timer. And then every so many seconds, and Hubert referenced it might be like 30 seconds, you would be able to actually uh, potentially uh, set a, you know, maybe it's a combat ability, or maybe it's a, uh, you know, changing your your passive combat action, uh, something of those sorts uh, that could add a lot of strategy to the game. And so I'm actually really excited about how this paired with the balancing that they've been doing with all the hero classes can play into the game. And so I believe that you're going to be able to, and this is speculation now, but I believe you're going to be able to bring, you know, a party of heroes in most cases uh, to combat situations. And so, you know, once you start to see what that opposing hero's combat layout is, you're going to have the option to probably, you know, choose you know to continue attacking to use an active or an ability or to switch out to a different hero that might counter that hero and i think this is where the game will get really fun because then you have opponents trying to counter counters and you try to build a very diverse class of heroes or a diverse group of heroes um to end up uh you know fighting each other and to me this feels a lot like uh, kind of going going back in in my time of you know playing uh, Pokemon online where it was a turn-based combat system 
uh, but you had a, a party and it was up to the user to define, you know, the attributes, the different in Pokemon, the different, you know, typings and the different abilities and the moves uh, to anticipate, you know, what your opponent could have. And so you build counters as answers to the weaknesses of the other characters that you have. And so I'm really excited about the, you know, the potential cerebral nature of a turn-based combat system. Uh, you know, that's that's really got me excited. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. You know, in it, it, it fits perfectly with you know, like these are cards too, and the, they look like cards. Let's just you know, I, let's be honest, right? Uh, and it, it also you know, when I think of turn based, you know, there's a few games that come to me like like you. Uh, one that jumps to my mind that I think was mostly turn based and is one of my favorite games of all times was Knights of the Old Republic. Oh. I think you could see something really cool like that where. Like when it, like you said, when it's it's my turn to decide what action, I might retarget a different enemy with you know my knight, or I might have my archer start shooting at the other guy. Yeah, I, I think that it's a very similar concept to yeah. that game. And that game, it did not feel turn based when you were playing. It felt live action, and I think yeah. they could do that here if they if they pull it off right. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. I mean, that, that downtime, that time between turns, you know, it can feel rushed when you're in the heat of the moment. And especially if your uh, heroes, in this case, continue to perform their basic actions in between those choices, I think it could feel really, really live and exciting. So right. yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that for sure. All right, so uh, the next note that I had um, was traveling on the map to different areas. And so last time they gave us a sneak peek uh, of, you know, the areas of the map where there was a, a sword, what it looked like, and uh, a sunken pirate ship. And one of the things they talked about is that you would actually be traveling, your hero would be traveling to these different areas. Um, and I don't know if that's like an actual transaction in order to travel to a, an area, but it made it feel a lot more interactive of what they're hoping to achieve with the map in the future. And that's something that, that stuck out to me. Do you care if I uh, wildly speculate here? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> uh, I, I think what's going to happen is you're going to see that look a lot like the mining and the gardening quest, uh, to be honest with you. Oh, I think sure. you're going to pick a spot on the map and that's going to say, oh, that's, you know, 15, quote unquote, tiles away. That's going to take you, you know, 150 minutes and it's going to take 15 stamina. I, I almost bet that's what's going to happen. And so that begs those questions of, you know, I'm trading that valuable stamina to move my hero. So I really have to have a plan in place. You don't want to get a group of three heroes all the way across the map to realize that you needed the monk and you brought the archer. You know what I mean? <laughs> I love that. That is that is a great idea. That really has me excited. Uh, you know, you could it, it really impacts the dynamics of the game so much, and you know, makes the uh, the you know the ramifications of your choices so much more impactful. So pretty cool. I, it's I it's literally costing you money. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, for sure. Um, All right, so um, the next two items I'd kind of group together as. Um, quality of life improvements that I was pretty impressed with. Uh, the first one is jackpot for gardening as they, they mentioned that, you know, they've been, uh, I would say satisfied with the reward structure or maybe even slightly unsatisfied with the reward structure of gardening at the moment. And remember that when you're going out to mine, you're going for your, the lock jewels that you have in your account. The, the dollars that, or the jewels that you're earning from gardening are coming from a quest pool. And that quest pool is generated, I think, by some percentage of total transactions. And then it's allocated to the different gardens based on the amount of, of total investment in each garden. And so one thing that they were concerned about when they first released the garden quest is, are we going to draw down from that pool too soon? And I think this is their way of saying, nope, we're all right. Uh, we might have <laughs> yeah, underestimated exactly. the draw on that. And so they're going to be introducing 
essentially a jackpot mechanism and I haven't gotten one yet in beta so I don't know what the amounts are going to be um, and I imagine it might scale based on your investment inside that garden as well. Um, I don't know if you're eligible for a jackpot even though you're you're not investing in a garden. I'm not sure if that's the case. Uh, I don't remember them saying that during the AMA, but I am pretty excited to see that, you know, maybe you could go ahead and, and earn, you know, five or ten jewel by sending a hero out instead of, you know, some of what, what we're getting now. Which you know is zero four. Yeah. And, <laughs> and and I get it because, you know, you're also earning on the gardens themselves. Um and so I, I get that they wanted to try to f make a balance, but it is a lot smaller, uh, at least for me, and I imagine for you, Nindorf, uh, compared to mining. So this is pretty exciting uh, quality of life improvement. Next one is stamina recharge, and oh boy, this one's fantastic. And so when your hero completes a quest, and or whether they're stuck, or whether you're sleeping, or whether you just aren't logging into the game, they're going to go ahead and start earning that stamina back even before you click the complete quest button. It's like, oh my goodness, this is going to oh, make such a amazing. big difference. So, I, I mean, that's just a really fun quality of life improvement that, you know, people have been clamoring for for a while. They were well, That's actually at, out in beta now, huh? Yeah, that's out in beta now. And they were also looking at another quality of life improvement and said this one was too hard to implement. And that's, you know, trying to queue a quest and have the potential stamina earned between the moment you hit the queue button and when they actually start added towards uh, your actual quest timer. But they mentioned that with smart contracts, that was just way too difficult to, to integrate. And so that's something that's not happening now and, and probably won't happen in the future. Yeah, I can see that. That makes sense because it, it, there's so many variables like block time and, you know, it, it, yeah, I could see how that'd be very difficult. But how many times have you, you know, not wanted to send a hero out at night because you're worried that they're going to get done at like, you know, 1 a.m. and you don't want them to sit not gaining stamina from 1 to, you know, 7 or whatever it is when you wake up. So I, I think that one alone is going to have huge impacts on people's quest returns and, and I mean in terms of runes or jackpots I mean that, that's that's huge to yeah. me yeah I that's that's really a good example of listening to player feedback and you know making a change that just helps people out all right the next thing that stuck out to me um, that I thought was interesting was abilities are going to be absolute and there was a question on, you know, if a uh, active one on a warrior would be the same as an active one on a pirate. And it sounds like that is going to be the case. And that's something that, you know, we were kind of recklessly speculating about in the last podcast with Mr. Zipper. And so with updated information, we just wanted to update our user base that those you. Uh, abilities will not be unique to the hero or will not be unique to the typing or the profession of the hero ah okay so if if you know it's like a chance to evade for example theoretically i mean that is equally as valuable to all heroes maybe you know situationally more capable on a you know certain heroes but that's interesting that that kind of changes the dynamic so then you know, as we and our listeners are out there trying to acquire these advanced elite or transcendent abilities, you kind of got to realize that, yeah, we are truly hoping and praying that we get the right <laughs> one selected for our hero. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, they definitely did indicate that, you know, advanced skill type one, if it's an evade, it might pair better with a thief than it would with a paladin. And so uh, that's that's certainly uh, Hubert did reference that that's, you know, just like you might have a profession that pairs better with a particular class. It's it's kind of the same thing. And so um, they actually, you know, like that level of randomness in, in summoning um, or that, you know, difficulty to control precisely the most perfect of, of heroes. 
Yeah, yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah, something. So next thing they talked about, um, and this is something that actually <laughs> we broke down in an AMA that we had on our our Discord earlier this week is that um, someone you know had the stones to go out and ask. <laughs> it looks like the dev heroes have really broken abilities. That's not very transparent. What are you guys going to do about it? <laughs> and oh, yes. I, you know, I really commend the uh, the question asker for uh, asking that at you know at, at an AMA. And Hubert's response, I I think was interesting, and I I, I certainly want to believe him, and I, I think I do believe him that they did not mean for the first ten heroes to have broken recessive traits on the abilities and that the dev team is actually committed to trying to not summon with those heroes anymore because of that and something that i described broken for us real quick for our listeners so that they remember oh yeah 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 and so um when we're talking about some of these these abilities, uh, you have your active one, active two. These are dominant traits. You have your passive one, passive two. These are also dominant traits. And those are the four abilities that every hero has. Every ability has then three recessive traits. And those recessive traits have a percentage chance of taking over when you're summoning with another hero. And usually when you're, you know, looking at a, a, a standard uh, trait system on, on a hero, you know, that exists for class or that exists um, to create the mutations for our basic classes to become advanced classes or even for the professions. Well, what we found is that they, the dev team, specifically heroes 1 through 10, had elite, transcendent, and advanced recessive traits. And that means that if you summon with those heroes repeatedly, there is a high percentage chance that you're going to get an offspring eventually that has a transcendent ability, an advanced ability, or an elite ability, depending on what that parent hero has. And so it's so, interesting. So it's basically like, Go ahead. Is, that like a, so is that like a way to, it's like they have predetermined mutations built in basically, right? right. You don't right. have to actually mutate. You can... Yeah recessively pop up mutations and that goes completely against at least from what i understand how their gene mixing smart contract is intended right. to work and that is what hubert said which is interesting <laughs> to hear that oh just you know coincidentally the first 10 heroes there was something that broke with their gene mixing system and they all ended up with amazing traits um but at the you know same what I time, bet it is? <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, I credit them that he came out on public record and said, we're going to do something about it. We don't want to summon with these heroes anymore. And, you know, we were looking at some of the devs have actually been swooping these heroes up and buying them up. And, you know, I think we were a little worried that that might have been for nefarious purposes. But after hearing this, it might actually be for you know, some, some honest purposes. And so if you've managed to snag one of those up out there, like one of our discord listeners, um, has been able to do, you know, consider yourself, uh, you know, fortunate and, you know, you got a, you got a souped up hero because as your analysis showed, there are not a lot of those abilities out in the world. Oh, that's fascinating because before we even started this podcast, I think was when I first had noticed these abilities just in passing and i feel like you and i looked and we did a little data scraping way back then and i think we had come across some of the addresses of the devs holding some of these advanced and right. elite heroes and we were like huh that's kind of interesting i feel like i should go buy some and then i, I believe i kind of like forgot about it for a while so now for it to kind of come full circle is really interesting yeah. and you know I do believe him too, because I, I think if you, uh, if you look at all their you know, previous actions that they've taken, I think this actually sheds light on that, uh, sort of somewhat of a controversy when that one Gen Zero on the top yes. nineteen was sold. That actually sheds a lot of light on why that was such a big deal, and they actually changed the hero contract 
because of that. So I, I believe in personally. Yeah. Yeah. Well, still a great question by a listener and, you know, I appreciate the, the honesty or, uh, you know, transparency that, that Hubert was, you know, answering with. So I thought that was uh, yeah, no doubt. pretty neat. And the last piece that I wanted to talk through, they address lock jewel, um, a little bit in, in the AMA about, you know, were they aware that, there was going to be the unintended consequences of an entire black market developing to sell uh, <laughs> Jewel. And their, their, their short answer was, no, uh, we didn't expect that to happen. Um, and then they kind of, it was interesting to me how quickly they followed up with, and there will be an NPC in the marketplace that allows you to do this more easily. <laughs> and so <laughs> it was kind of funny that, you know, they, and they they also you know put in a fair amount of um, caution out there to all listeners of saying, don't do this with a third party. Um, you know, this is really only designed or intended for you know sending Lock Jewel from a compromised wallet to one of your other wallets, and so it's really for the user. But at the same time, they're kind of like, yeah, it's you know. It's decentralized finance. People are on their own. You know, if you really wanted to, I guess, as I've been thinking about it, I mean, you could, it's a little harder, but you could go sell your, your key to someone too and tell them, you know, how much lock jewel you have. And so I I guess in some ways, I I think, you know, the community kind of blew it a little bit out of proportion in terms of, you know, trading lock jewel is just, I think it's going to happen in a free market system. And it was just interesting that their, their response was don't be stupid about it and do it at your own risk. And, and the NPC is coming out in a couple of weeks. So <laughs> if you want to oh, do it, funny. that's the easier way to do it. So I, I thought that was just kind of a, an interesting, you know, kind of mix of answers to, to address that. Yes. Uh, so my quick take on that is for our listeners, I, I would exercise extreme caution and maybe if you have a compromised account, do it. Um, but for our non-listeners, do it all on your own. Hey, try to even play with a blockchain yourself. <laughs> all those lock jewels that get lost, that decreases the amount of tradable jewel and increases our value. So that's my take. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I, um, and, you know, of course, there's been also... You know, I I don't know how much you've paid attention to it, but all sorts of drama around the the DF, DFK wiki team uh, this last week, which we're not going to get into. But also, you know, kind of the the black market trading sites, they're down and out for the time being. So there's not really a way to do it, even if you want to do. Yep, that's right. All right, well, let's go ahead and transition over to Gen Zero Summoning. It was your turn last time. And what did you get? Yeah, so as I was gearing up, I, I was going to continue my streak here of renting two other Gen Zeros to pair with our two, you know, for two chances, you know, because I, I really like that, the additional chances, because you just, over time, you're going to get more legendaries, you know, you, you're going to get more mythics, the more chances you have at summoning. Um, however, what I encountered was that this was in the thick of the tavern being a mess, and I... I went through, I don't know, 20 or 30 monks and pirates each, and I could not find anything that was not execution, not reverted, or, you know, um, summoning not available. So I, I was like, you know what, whatever, I'll just, I'll put the two together. Uh, and as I, I kind of said earlier, uh, it was kind of like my ninja, I ended up doing that again, and, you, you know, the, the RNG kind of, I kind of got two mutations here, or I shouldn't say mutations, rather, I should say recessive popping up that combined in a way that was actually okay. Nice, uh, so nice. pirate plus monk, I was hoping for ninja, but I ended up getting a priest, and then the gardening trait took over. So I'm like, okay, so, you know, uncommon priest gardener, I can live with that. And I actually might keep this guy around for a while. All right, well, that's exciting. And that was your your second of your two summons. That is correct. Yep. And All then right. I passed them on to you, I believe it was. Yeah, I'm I'm sitting on them now, 
and I, I'm actually, I think my timer started a little bit ago here uh, tonight, and I need to make a decision. You know, I'll, I'll be honest, this is a, a tough choice. I don't know what I'm going to do. I I am tempted to, to try to just rent them out um, and gain a little more jewel right now. With the price of jewel so low, I'm kind of in jewel accumulation mode. Um, and, you know, I'm thinking then I'm going to, you know, maybe sell... Uh, pay off some student loans or, you know, put it into yes. the gardens once it increases in price a little later. So, you know, I, I, I can't really decide what I want to do, but I have a lot of heroes right now. So as much as that's been our, our mode of operation, um, I don't, I, yeah, I just I kind of feel like I'd, I want to stick on to as much liquid jewel as possible at the moment. So it'll be a tough decision and I'll have to check back with the listeners uh, once I once I make the choice um, and we have our next podcast. Yeah. Well, Hey, either way, good luck to you. <laughs> so one thing that I, you know, we talked about yesterday as an investment team, you Walton and I, uh, that we thought would be interesting to just chat about quick with our listeners is what is the value of a gen zero? And, you know, I was commenting that I thought it was funny that we talked about this with Mr. Zipper about a week ago, and, you know, we were feeling pretty bullish at the time. Uh, yesterday, we were feeling, you know, pretty bearish, I would say. Um, so what are your thoughts on a Gen Zero? And, you know, ultimately, we were thinking, maybe we sell one um, with the, the value of Gen Zeros dropping the way that they have. Yeah, it, you know, it's, it's a tough calculus because summoning had been the primary method of profiting from this game in the past. And, you know, in the future as they level up, maybe it will be again when you're able to inject extra tiers into these new heroes so that you can get, you know, boosted stats at level one. But, like, right now it's tough, you know. It, it, it feels a lot like the jewel that's locked up in that Gen Zero could be better spent or utilized in the gardens or even in the bank at this point. Uh, yeah. And, you know, there's you can always buy Gen Zeros again. There's a market for it, you know. It, you don't know if they'll double in price, have in price, um, but personally, it's it's yeah, it's a very tough decision. It, it is very difficult when you have that much jewel locked into one hero, because you're never gonna make that back in terms of questing, and if you can't make it back in summoning right now, you know it, it begs all these questions. So it, yeah, it's it's a tough one. Yeah, let's go check what the the floor price of a Gen Zero is at the moment. Jewel. That's a good idea. We're at 2,500 jewels, so it's interesting. And it, yeah, so it's, it has definitely come of, down. There doesn't seem to be a lot of level differentiation either at the moment. Yeah, and I suppose that makes sense. Um, do, I, I suspect that'll change as you get to like level 10. Maybe yeah, five will help somewhat. I don't know. I think it's going to have to be like level 10 when you can really start to get boosts that are meaningful. Um, but, you know, it's we'll have to wait and see, I suppose. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, you know, it's... I, yesterday, I think I was almost ready to pull the trigger on selling. And today, I'm, you know... <laughs> I, I'm kind of feeling the opposite direction. And it was nice to see even this number and I you know we might we we're probably looking at some fake tavern prices yesterday too um, with the tavern the oh, no, no. before the API was broken uh, but seeing the price of jewel jump down and this not quite adjust as fast uh, got, was definitely a little scary so um, it, it was at you know 2100 and so seeing it come up a little bit you know makes me feel a little better and there's you know only a couple there at the bottom yeah, and I think it's also important to remember too that we're in this odd transition where Crystal Veil is is there. So maybe there's just if people are still holding their jewel, maybe that's why these prices are deflated. Um, and when you get back to a more, I'll say, steady state where people aren't trying to get airdrops, maybe they'll be pulling these heroes off again. Um, and so if that is true, I think you'll see that roller coaster a few more times as the three new realms that are unannounced. Um, come out over the next, I don't know if it's year, year and a half. So I think, I think we have, you know, as Gen Zero holders, we have plenty of opportunities to get out if we want. So I, I, I don't think it's scary. You know, you, you're 
investment instincts when things are crashing say, oh, bail, bail, but that is the absolute worst thing you can do. Right. So I, I think that is going to drive me moving forward. I, I hear you. I think that's, that's great advice. And, and you know, I, I think for any of our listeners out there, again, like you, like you mentioned earlier, a good reminder that, you know, jewel price is where it was at not that long ago. This is very normal for crypto markets for it to go up and down. Um, and, you know, there was, you know, like I, I talked to really exciting AMA this week. You know, I could not be more excited about the long term of the game. Short term, you know, I'm feeling good that the, the API v6 has been released. And now long term, you know, I'm really looking forward to that combat. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Yep, absolutely. I, 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 I think, you know, my closing thought here would be, you know, let's just let's let's see where this game goes. Let's see all the awesome things they can do. You know, the dev team has always been delivering. They've been continued to give us cool features and, you know, the promises of more to come. And uh, I, I'm excited. That's all I got. All right. Well, thank you very much from Raf and Nindorf. And we wish you the best of questing. Thank you for listening and take care.